let's start talking about the adverse effects of anti-seizure medications. And as you probably know, there are lots of them. So what is common to all anti-seizure medications? Well, they have all a lot of CNS effects. And that's predictable because we just decrease excitability in the brain. Therefore, it's not a surprise that you might feel tired, that you might feel dizzy. We also depress cerebellar activity, so we cannot do smooth movements. So therefore, you see, for example, problems with balance, ataxia, or you can see nystagmus, the dancing eye, even double vision or tremor. So all kinds of CNS effects that are predictable just by decreasing excitability in the brain. Then another thing to know is that all the anti-seizure medications are teratogenic. So they are all not recommended in pregnancy. However, it's also obviously very dangerous to have a seizure during pregnancy. So now the current guidelines say whenever you have a pregnant woman that is well controlled under a seizure medication, you're just going to continue on this medication because the teratogenic effects of the drugs are probably less dangerous than having a seizure during pregnancy. The only exception is valproic acid, as this drug is associated with the most birth defects, so you would like to switch your patient to a different medication. So now let's talk about the specific characteristics of anti-seizure drugs. And I'm going to start with the good old phenytoin, which is around since 60 years. So we know a lot about this drug. In addition, everybody who is on this anti-seizure medication is not on them for 7 or 14 days like an antibiotic treatment. They are going to be on it for decades. Therefore, side effects are going to come up all the time. So what do we need to know about phenytoin? So phenytoin is, number one, a SIP inducer. That's an important point. So you're going to induce the metabolism of other drugs. So you, oh, you would expect sub-therapeutic levels of other drugs that are metabolized via SIP enzymes. Then you see hirsutism, so more hair growth when girls start to look like dudes. Then you're going to see enlarged gums, which is known as gingival hyperplasia. So that's very important to counsel the patient on because you need very good oral hygiene to make sure that the teeth is not going to fall out sooner or later. Then you see nystagmus. So this is a common adverse effect. I had also listed it here. But for phenytoin, it's really happening in basically all of the patients who take phenytoin. Therefore, nystagmus is even used to check for compliance, to figure out if the patient is taking this medication. So phenytoin is, like all the other anti-seizure medications, teratogenic. And then it also can show with osteomalacia. So you're going to have bone softening. The reason is that it inf interferes with vitamin D metabolism because phenytoin is also metabolized by hydroxylation and the same enzymes that are necessary to activate vitamin D. So you would expect to have less active vitamin D in your body and therefore you cannot take up the calcium as well. Therefore you're going to show up with soft bones osteomalacia. It also interferes with folate absorption because it uses the same transporter in the gastrointestinal tract than folic acid. Therefore you're going to have less folic acid because phenytoin and folic acid are going to compete for this transporter. And so you could get megaloblastic anemia as a consequence of the folate deficiency. You should, you should always supplement the patient on phenytoin with folate. And then you can have all kinds of neurological problems. So this first initial letter gives you at least the phenytoin. So this might be a little memory aid to remember the all kinds of different side effects of phenytoin. So I did the same for carbamazepine, which is also a SIP inducer, but in contrast to phenytoin, it induces its own metabolism. So it induces particularly the SIPs that it's also metabolized via. That means if you put somebody on carbamazepine, this patient might have in, let's say, two or four weeks later than subtherapeutic levels of carbamazepine because the SIPs that metabolize carbamazepine got induced by the drug itself. Then this is one of these weird drugs that increase ADH. So it stimulates from the pituitary the secretion of ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So you get hyponatremia, delusional hyponatremia, which is another problem because, as you probably know, hyponatremia by itself can provoke seizures. 
Then there is a rash possible undercover mazepin, which can then progress to Stephen Johnson syndrome, so a life-threatening skin condition where the epidermis peels from the dermis. There is a specific HLA allele identified that correlates highly with the Stephen Johnson syndrome, and therefore um, it is recommended that you screen patients for this HLA B1502, and this is predominantly seen in Asian patients. So you would not do this for any patient, but if you have an Asian patient, you would screen for this allele. And then you can see all kinds of blood dyscrasias like aplastic anemia or a mild leukopenia. I mean, the dangerous thing is obviously the aplastic anemia when you basically dissolve the bone marrow stem cells. And this is something carbamazepine can do. So what should we know about valproic acid, valproid? So valproic acid is very famous to lead to a lot of weight gain, valproic for weight gain. And then it also leads to alopecia, so to hair loss. So you can see again what a broad array of side effects we have within these anti-seizure medications. We talked about phenytoin leading to hirsutism. Now we have alopecia in valproate. And then this drug is also super liver toxic. So therefore, um, we should never give this to kids. It uh, has a black box warning for kids under the age of 10, which also makes sense because we think that the liver enzymes just develop with the years, and therefore there's a high risk of overdosing valproate in kids and getting some fatal liver damage. Then for lamotrigine, I would only remember the rash. I always remember it with a life-threatening rash for lamotrigine. Because, again, 10% of the people can get a rash, and it's generally recommended to stop the drug when you see a rash because this is also a rash that can progress to Stephen Johnson syndrome. Topiramate is famous for causing weight loss. It's so good in doing that that it was even approved as a weight loss drug, Qsemia. And then gabapentin, again, causes weight gain. So within these anti-seizure medications, we have two drugs, valproic acid and gabapentin, which lead to weight gain, and then topiramate, which leads to weight loss. I also just want to finish up saying that there's a lot of different indica indications for anti-seizure medications. Some of them are indicated for neuropathic pain, like carbamazepine or gabapentin. We have other drugs that are used for bipolar disorders, like valproic acid or lamotrigine or even carbamazepine. So just to mention that there's a lot of different indications for anti-seizure medications. This concludes the video on anti-seizure medications.